Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to read the new novel Great Moguls. So let's get started. Chapter 1 Babur The Mughal emperors ruled over India for nearly 200 years. Some of the emperors were clever generals who led their armies to win battles in many parts of India. Others were wise men who ruled their people well. Many of the emperors became famous for making fine buildings and beautiful gardens. The first Mughal emperor was Babur who was born in 1482. His real name was Zahiruddin but his mother called him Babur which means a lion in Turkish language. His father came from the family of Timur the Great and his mother from that of Genghis Khan who had been a famous Mongol or Mughal chief. Babur's father Umar Sheikh Mirza was the Khan or ruler of a small state called Farghana in Turkish. When Babur was 12 years old, his father died as the result of an accident. The Khan was feeding his tame pigeons one day when the pigeon house which was built on the edge of a steep hill fell down and killed him. After his father's death, Babur became the Khan of Farghana. Enemies tried to capture his estate with the help of his chiefs. Babur spent the next 12 years fighting to keep his throne. However, his enemies were too strong for him and at last he had to leave Farghana. Babur's small army and many of his chiefs remained true to him. Babur told them, I, had to, I have to, had to give my father's throne, but I shall find another. Timur was a great soldier. He marched into India and ruled over the Punjab. I shall do as he did and marched into India also. So Babur's led small army but well trained army into Afghanistan. After many hard battles, he took Kabul, the capital of Afghanistan, and became the ruler of several became the ruler of the country. From Kabul, Babur marched into India several times, taking Ghazni on his way, and at last reaching the river Indus. Then he went back to Kabul. At that time, there was a king of Delhi who was cruel and unjust. His ministers disliked him, and his people feared him. He was called Sultan Ibrahim Lodi. Daulat Khan, a prime minister of his, who was the governor of Punjab, sent a message to Babur saying, come and help me to attack Sultan Ibrahim Lodi. Babur agreed to this and marched with his army to Lahore and Dipalpur and captured both cities. At the last moment, Daulat Khan became frightened and refused to help Babur against Sultan Ibrahim Lodi of Delhi. Babur knew that his own army was too small to fight along against the Sultan, so he led his soldiers back to Kabul. Later in 1526, Babur attacked India once more. He had an army of about 25,000 men and he took with them several large guns. But when Babur arrived at Panipat near Delhi, he found Sultan Ibrahim Lodi waiting for him with an army of 100,000 soldiers and with 1,000 elephants that he had been trained to fight. Babur was a clever general. He sent for his chief officers and they told him that the Sultan's army was at least four times as large as their own. So Babur said, Because of this, our only chance of winning the battle is to surprise the enemy. True, he has more men than we have, but our men are better. The Sultan's soldiers riding on elephants came slowly forward to attack the small Mughal army which stood in front of them. From the high backs of the elephants, the Sultan's soldiers threw spears and shot arrows at their enemies, while the soldiers on foot walked forward behind the elephants. Babur ordered his horsemen to ride behind the elephants and then to attack the Sultan's army from the back. They did this before this, his army could turn round. The Mughal riding fast horses attacked first in one place and then in another, killing the Sultan's soldiers with their swords and spears. Then Babur shot his big gun, which had been pulled by an oxen, at the Sultan's army. 
the soldiers were already thrown out of the line by attacks from behind. The noise of Babur's gun sounded like thunder and the smell of fire smoke frightened the elephants. So they ran away, throwing many sultan's army, killing many of his men. By the middle of the day, the king of Delhi soldiers had thrown down their swords and ran away. On the flat ground outside the city of Delhi, thousands of the Sultan soldiers lay dead. One of Babur's officers came to him and said, Sir, we have found the body of Sultan Ibrahim Lodi. Babur went to look at the dead man and said, Ibrahim Lodi was a brave man. Bury him like a true soldier. Babur was now the king of Delhi and Agra, but he had many new difficulties now. His officers and ministers were used to the cold weather of the mountains of Afghanistan and they did not like and they did not like the great heat of the flat low country. They did not want to stay in Agra and so began and so came to Babur and said, Sir, why should we stay any longer in this country? The people did not like us and we have no friends here. Let us go back to Kabul where our wife and children wait for us. The emperor was silent for some moments as he remembered the green hills and cold air of his own country. He too wanted to leave the hot, dry, flat country of India for the gardens near Kabul, for the fruit trees and the fields of flowers. But he knew that if he marched his forces back, his enemies would attack the Punjab and the poor people would have much trouble and pain. They would again have a king who would not treat them fairly. Then Babur spoke to his officers. We won a great battle over Sultan Ibrahim Lodi of Delhi and now we are the masters of Punjab. How can we go back to Kabul? Our enemies will take the Punjab from us and hurt these people. Can we do this? No. I must stay here and you must stay with me. I shall need your help to fighting other parts of India and take new cities. So Babur's officers and ministers agreed to remain with him. The emperor was pleased and gave each man a part of treasure which had belonged to Sultan Ibrahim Lodi. The emperor's Babur often sent messages from Agra to Kabul. They would ride on horseback to a rest house and there would be given fresh horses for the next part of the journey. The rest the rest houses were built very few miles away along the road. In this way, Babur was able to send letters from his office in Agra to his home in Kabul. He still had many enemies and the chief of these was Rana Sangha and the Rajput leader of Mewar. Rana Sangha was a great general and a very brave man. He had fought in many battles and his body was covered all over with old wounds. He ruled over nearly whole of central India. Now, as leader of Rajput, he wanted to destroy Babur's army in Punjab. Many of the Hindu governors were ready to help him attack the Mughal Empire. Babur always wanted to fight against Rana Sangha and take his kingdom away. Then, March 1527, the Emperor Babur and Rana Sangha both arrived at Khanwa near Agra. Rana Sangha had never been beaten in a battle and knew that if the Rajputs won, they would become the masters of India. Babur knew that the Mughals would rule no longer if the Hindus won. His officer said to him, Sir, the Rajputs are well-trained soldiers and we cannot be sure that we shall beat them. Babur answered, Every man must die one day. Only God lives forever. It is better for the man to die. Well then, live badly. If we die today on the field of battle, we shall die like a true man. If we live, we shall be the winners. Let us promise on the Holy Quran that none of us will leave the battle while he is alive. The Rajputs attacked the Mughal army again and again and, kill, and killed many of his emperor's men. Babur's heavy gun shot at the Rajputs as they came forward but Rana Sangha had so many soldiers that they were still able to attack the Mughals. Then Babur used his soldiers on horseback in the same way as he had done against the army of Sultan Lodi. His soldiers rode round the 
that puts army and attack them from behind while the heavy guns shot at them from the front. The Rajputs were not able to fight both in front and their back. By the evening, they were defeated. Babur was now emperor of the whole of North India. Rana Sangha was not killed and reached the hill safely, but he died a year later. This left the Rajputs without a strong leader and the power of Hindus was now broken. Babur still had a few enemies to defeat. The Afghan chiefs of Bihar and Bengal refused to let him rule them, so in 1529, Babur fought a great battle against him. He defeated these Afghan chiefs and so became emperor of Bengal too. The young Rajput did not want Babur to rule them, and one young Rajput planned to kill him in Delhi. He knew that emperor often dressed in the clothes of a working man and walked about the streets at night. Babur always went alone because he wanted to see for himself how his people lived. If they knew that he was the emperor, they would not speak to him freely. The young Rajput hid a sharp knife in his clothes and went to the city by night, hoping to find Babur. There were many people in the streets, and the young Rajput looked closely at them as they passed away. Suddenly, he heard loud shouts. Men began to run down with the street, some of them into shops, taking their children with them. What is happening? Why are you running? asked the Rajput. But nobody would stop to answer his questions. Then he saw a mad elephant coming rush, come rushing down the narrow street. In the path of the elephant, there was a small child. Save the child. It will be killed by the elephant, shouted one man. Who is going to lose his life for somebody else's child, said another man. While they were talking, the elephant had knocked the child down with its trunk and it seemed away tread on the child with its foot and people turned away and shut their eyes. Suddenly, a man ran forward. Quickly, he picked up the child front in front of the elephant and carried off. As he did, his turban fell off and people saw that it was the emperor. It is Babur, it's the emperor, they said to one another. The young Rajput came forward and knelt at the emperor's feet. Sir, you are a very brave man. I wanted to kill you, but you had shown me that it is better to save life than to destroy it. The emperor looked at him and said, You too are a brave man to tell me that you came to kill me. But I shall spare your life as you have spared mine. I shall make you a soldier in the royal bodyguard. Babur was learned man, man as well as a soldier. When he was not fighting battles, he spent much of his time studying. He wrote a book called Babur Nama, the styles of the custom and history of those days, as well as the story of Babur's life. He enjoyed all the games and often swam in the river. He was very strong and could walk along the top of the wall carrying a tall soldier under his each arm. The emperor Babur also loved beautiful gardens. At Agra he had gardens made and planted with trees and flowers. Water flowed from many fountains and made the air fresh and clean. In his school gardens, Babur could almost forget the heat of the long Indian summer. In 1530, Hawaiian the sun, Babur loved most fell ill. The doctor were called, but when they had little hope that Humayun would get better. Sir, we have done our best, but it is no good, they told the emperor. Are you sure that you have tried anything? asked Babur. We have tried every kind of medicine, your majesty, but the prince only grows worse. The emperor looked down as his son lying weak and ill on a bed. On a bed. He said, I would give all my money, even my kingdom, to save my son. More than that, I would give my own life to save his life. May God hear my prayer and let my son's illness pass into my body. Strangely enough, Humayun's health suddenly came back and Babur began to feel ill. As Humayun grew better, Babur grew worse and within a few days, Humayun was well again but his father was dead. In December 1530, when Babur died, he was only 48 years old. His body was taken from Agra to Kabul, where it was buried in a garden, the Bagh-e-Babur. 
So guys, the chapter 1 is finished of the Great Moguls. Now we are going to do the question and answers. So let's get started with it. Question 1. Who was Babur's father and how did he die? Question 2. Why did Babur, when first taking an army to India, not defeated the Sultan Ibrahim Lodi? How did he defeat the Sultan in the end? Question 3. Why did the young Rajput decide not to kill Babur? Question 4. When Babur was not fighting, what other things did he do? Question 5. Babur ruled fairly. Find examples of this in this story. So guys, you have to write these answers in the comment section. Our today's, our today's YouTube video has been ended. The chapter 1 is closed. The questions have been finished. You have to answer the questions answer in the comment. So write it in the comment. I will see it and reply it if I have time. So I hope you like today's video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more videos. Till then take care everybody. Allah.